Welcome to this week's Drift Juice. Okay, thank you everybody for coming. Um, I think this talk is actually a really personal talk and it's quite funny that I've um, been asked to do it again because last time I did this it was for my group in Birmingham um, and it's kind of like presenting your talk to your own class so it's a different story altogether. So, what I've done the past two years is I've stumbled across all these different topics and I think the relevance is the bit in between, the bit that links everything up. So I'm going to try my hardest to um, show you my way of thinking and see the things that I've found along the way that have helped me. Okay. You've changed. You've changed. This is actually um, on my friend's wall in a um, picture on the side, he was like, you've changed, you've changed. He said, even from me saying it first time to second time, you've changed. Your autonomy's changed, your thoughts have changed, your situation's changed. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it. And this truth juice period for me has just been a period of change. At the end of the day, the only thing constant is change. So I think um, it's been aware of the change and going with it and accepting it and um, mindful of it all. So, a little bit about me. Who am I? Now, I try to, I've been, tried to work out the best way to portray myself because I do find that um, we all portray ourselves differently depending on where we are. Because you aren't the same person at work as you are at your mum and dad's, that you are at your friends, as you are in the pub. Because you wear this mask or front or whatever you want to call it. And um, I tried to, to put together all the little bits about my life. I mean, my, my upbringing was interesting and I've always been really blessed with crazy people around my kitchen table. And um, I then went on to do a media degree. I'm a therapist. I'm qualified on loads of things, but I've never pursued it. I've never, had, um, never really wanted to pursue it. I'm university ready at quite different things, but I've never really wanted to go that way. I've just got a thirst for knowledge. And the things that I found along the way have been from a diversity of places. They have been from the crazy kitchen table conversations, or they have been from a university lecturer, or, I mean, most of my best information comes from people who are on the dole. It's true. I mean, the people who, on paper, aren't qualified, are the most qualified people in the university of life, as far as I'm concerned. And the reason why I've gone into this who I am is because this is what we're trying to do is, is be aware of all the layers and all the facets to our personality. I think the onion is uh, it's an analogy that's been used for ages because these layers, every time we unla unwrap one we find something else underneath. And what we do is we make our experience dependent on all the other things that we've experienced. So for example, somebody could come in smelling of a perfume, and one person would say, oh, it reminds me of a girlfriend that I was in love with and it brings back loads of great memories. Somebody else might be reminded of their mum who was horrible to them who didn't. So it's, it's the association and it's the layers that have, have built our paradigm. I think when you look at these alternative subjects, it makes you question those paradigms, how they were formed, and are they benefiting us? Now this is um, this is something from the Stephen Covey book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Just out of curiosity, who can see the young lady? Who can see the old lady? Who can see both? Chosen <laughs> 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 But the whole point is, no one's wrong. You can see the young lady and the old lady. And you're both right. Now we could sit here and argue, one person saw the young one and one person saw the old one. You could argue, no, no, you're wrong, no, no, you're wrong. But actually, no one's wrong. And if you adapt this idea that everybody's looking from a different place, because we've had a different let of paradigms put onto our life, once you adapt to that and you realise that there is no wrong point of view, it then takes away the judgment and it takes away the um, 
the negativity towards somebody else's point of view. And especially when you're looking at alternative things, you need to accept that somebody else isn't necessary. There's no two people in this world that are going to completely agree. It's impossible because our paradigms are so different because of the layers. Even brother and sister, or two brothers brought up exactly the same, their ideals and their views of life are not the same. It's impossible. Now, as I said, I'm a therapist. So I do uh, reflexology, aromatherapy, massage, um, Swedish massage, sports massage, Reiki. I've just kind of accumulated them as I've gone along. They're all interesting, I just find everything interesting. But I was fascinated to think that, hold on, a massage can fix all these problems. You don't need to go and poison yourself with, with painkillers or, or pharmaceutical drugs. You can have a massage. And we're not doing that, instead, we're taking drugs. And I just, how do you get your head around this? And it's like, we've been taken so far away from our point of view, we aren't given this, this um, I don't know, I think places like this show you that there is a choice and there is another viewpoint. Because the pharmaceutical companies only see in the old lady. There's other viewpoints there, there's other things, there's massage, reflexology, there's nutrition, there's a whole host of other ways to deal with this issue. And I think the other thing about being a therapist is you realise that the physical is the last thing to be affected. The first thing is your mental and your emotional and your spiritual. They're all connected. It's, a, it's like when you learn about the body systems, you've got the cardiovascular system, the endocrine system. One doesn't get ill and the other one stay okay. It affects everything. It's the relationship between everything. It cannot be singled out. I mean, um, a lot of pharmaceutical drugs, say for example aspirin is taken from willow, it's derived from a natural plant, taken apart, we're only given one little bit. Cannabis, they want to make cannabis so they can only take the bit that makes you better and you don't get stoned. Well, that's part of the healing. It's, 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 the, it's the synergy, it's, it's all working together that makes it work. It's like taking a recipe apart and missing things out. It, it works because it's the mix. And I think once we start looking at things holistically, it changes your viewpoint of everything because mind, body or spirit, it doesn't matter which one you affect, the others come with it, whether you like it or not. Um, I've studied a couple of different, the, like the acupuncture sites, the meridian sites, and the energy that flows through your body. Um, these are, are fascinating. The chakra is another really amazing system. We're going to look at the chakras today. But I, did, I was going to go into the meridians, I was going to go into all these different energy centres, and if you look at it, we've got so many different historical places we can look for how our energy works. To go through all of them would just, A, it would be impossible, and B, it would be boring. But the chakras, I think, explains things um, in a real simple terms, and a lot of people are really familiar with the chakras. Now, the first time I ever did a talk was a Truth Juice Open Mic about a year and a half ago, and all I did was went through the seven chakras. Because I say, you can do a talk, Vic, you can do a talk. What am I doing a talk on? I don't even know. And he's like, I'll just talk on something. I thought, right, go back to the basics. Because, as you say, you're quite happy to miss the basics, you don't need to know that. We already know the basics, so don't need to them. But actually, once you revisit the basics, you'll see that we missed something out first time, or, the more advanced you became at the subject, you forgot, so you need to revisit, just to remind yourself. I mean, when we was at college, we always had a research book, and I was really kind of, I did, we, I did art, so it was like, research it, develop it, and then come up with a painting. Well, no, 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 I want to paint the painting now, I'm ready. It was like, no, no, you've got to research, you've got to develop. And I got really frustrated with this fact, I've got to like, keep notes. Why have I got to do that? And it's not until you picture shit, you think, ah, oh, where, did, where was I thinking when I did this? Oh, that's what I was thinking. Oh, well, which bit doesn't work? Which bit do I take? So, chakras. I, um, I've known about chakras for years, but every so often you'll pick up a new book and they'll explain it in a different way. And you'll think, oh, I like that. The word chakra itself means spinning wheel. So it's like a vortex. Now, the way that I visualise it is like a plug hole. You're going down a plug hole because the spiral is the spiraling. Now you've got the chakra comes outwards and inwards, so it goes through your body system. 
like so. And each chakra has got a colour, it's got a sound, it's got a note, and it's got an association. <coughs> How it works is um, when we're healthy, our energy centres are running right, and you can feel that it's working properly. Once you've got something, again, if you connect the spiritual, the mental, and the emotional, um, and the physical together, you'll be affected physically because of the mental association with that area. Now, <coughs> start from the bottom, start from the red root chakra. Your root chakra, basically your bottom chakras, your bottom three chakras are your physical ones. So, your root chakra is self-need, what you need. Selfishness, looking after yourself. Um, each chakra's got a seven year developmental stage, so it's from one to seven. So you're literally learning how to walk, to talk, to, to eat, to sleep, to everything. You're learning how to use your physical. You're learning how to be self-dependent and look after yourself. This is also um, the chakra that deals with like um, grounding yourself and being real, being in the physical. The next chakra, your sacral chakra, deals with your sexual energies. This is um, orange. And this is... Um, if you think about the bottom three chakras, this is all like with needs, this is lustfulness, what you want, this is selfishness, it's, it's kind of I want, I want. This is where um, anybody with any sort of addictive quality, so anybody with like drug, sex, alcohol addictions will all be suffering with their energies in the lower chakras because they're either too strong or they're too weak or they're not in balance. I mean the next one is yellow, the solar plexus. This is your digestive system. Now, again, if you think about the seven years period, you've got your root from um, one to seven, then you've got your cycle, which is your orange colour, which is um, seven to 14. And if you think about the sexuality side of it, you, you're dealing with being a boy or a girl. From the age of seven, children are children, and then from seven, you then become your sexual shoes, you, you, you go down the route of finding your identity as a woman or as a as a masculine. The next level is from 14 to 21. This is to do with finding your own situ your own identity within your peer group. So it's to do with um, you've found your friends now, you've realised you, you've associated yourself with your sexuality, you're now dealing with who you are with your peers and you're now standing up for you for your personality as it were. Now as I said your bottom three chakras are physical so we've got so far selfishness, sexual and, and, um, and this kind of neediness and sexuality and um, sex as in boy or girl, as in you finding your own comfortableness with your own sex. And then the next one is feeding yourself, which is nourishing and um, this is the chakra that will be affected for people who overeat or undereat. So this is where anorexia and... Um, people who are really overeating. These chakras, they, they aren't grounded, they aren't, it's to do with the physical. Now, these are 7, 14, 21. Now, think about what's going on in your life at the same time as well. Next one is your heart. Now, back down to linking things up, I mean, one of the things he said about me was I went to a Catholic school. I was an RE teacher's worst nightmare. But, I found it really, really interesting. And a lot of the Bible references that I find particularly interesting are the ones that refer to your heart. Because your heart is your altar. The heart, the heart, the heart, the heart. Read from your heart, think from your heart. About your heart. Why is your heart so important? Well, the heart chakra is the one that links those three physical, those, the three physical elements with love. Now it's 20 to 28. So this is the time, kind of time when we're finding relationships and having children. So this is where you get to the level of unconditional love. So you aren't in the selfish, you're not doing it for, for sex, drugs, rock and roll for yourself. You're doing it for somebody else completely and you've got complete unconditional love. Now, this is the stage where the ages stop because not everybody gets to this level. Now, it's not only external, it's internal, so you can't really love somebody else unless you've got love for yourself. And I know that sounds a bit cheesy, and I must say, 
this talk is quite funny because people have been quoting my own talk back to me quite a lot. And uh, living from the heart is something that we all should do. We get distracted with the button bits. We're like, oh, is everything okay? I'm not over really do I want it? And you, you fall into the, the button chakras. So, in principle, if you can master your heart, we're sound. Okay? So, 28 now. Your next, your next levels um, are the numbers associated with them are 28 to 35. However, as I said, not everybody reaches these levels. And not everybody um, wants to go any further. Some people don't want to, they say, what? I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy in these lower realms. I'm happy being selfish. And there's a lot of people out there that are happy being selfish. Because why not? They're all right. So, your throat. This is where we get into the spiritual. These top three chakras are your spiritual chakras. Um, your throat. This is communication. Obviously. In fact, a lot of this stuff is obvious. Once you think about it, it is really obvious. Um, your throat. Communication. Not only with other people, but being honest with yourself. Um, and it's quite funny because once you're aware of this, you'll find when you get a pain, you'll know what it is. And when you get a sore throat, it's normally you're either holding in angry words or you're not being honest with yourself. And just be aware of that and see whether you think that it's right. Okay. Third eye chakra. Third eye chakra, um, it's a way there's been a lot of... Um, a lot of people know about it through different cultures and different areas. And um, anybody heard of the indigo children as well? Yeah. Indigo children, the idea is the third eye is a lot more open. So this is um, where you deal with telepathy, intuition, empathy, and it's connect communication with yourself and the universal God or each other, one consciousness, however you want to put it, is the connection to you and everything. So once this is working correctly, in principle, you know what the other person's feeling and thinking. So why would you do something to hurt them or harm them? Because you know that it's not going to go well. Now, the crown chakra is the complete opposite to your root chakra. It's selflessness. It's doing something without no ego attachment, completely selfless. And if you think about it, think about all the pictures and the saints and the rings and the... You think, well, what is it? And sometimes you look at somebody, you'll find somebody every so often that's particularly blessed, and you just look at them and it's almost like they're glowing. And you can see this, this kind of just glowing from them. And people will say, you're glowing. And this is because they're, they're coming from a selfless place. Now, I believe all of these topics and subjects that we're talking about in Truth Juice as a whole affects on one level something in this energy system to bring us down to the lower chakras. It makes us greedy, it makes us selfish, it makes us lustful. Then things like media, fluoride, all these negative things are to take us away from this because when we're working correctly, our power is phenomenal. It must be. Now, let me show you a picture that I found whilst looking at pictures of chakras. And this is something that um, I didn't even know. Was when a man and a woman um, connect sexually and become partners, their chakras change. So if someone's going clockwise, the other partner will go anti-clockwise. I didn't know that. I thought I'd pop it in there anyway because I was intrigued by it. Um, so this, is, this shows that what's happening on this energetic level is so momentous, it affects the person you sat next to. It affects everything around you. In fact, once you start being mindful of what's happening, it's phenomenal, the knock-on effects of this energy and what it has on your life. Um, just randomly found a picture of it that I just think is lovely. And um, Alex Greg, Greg um, he does some brilliant pictures and this is the energy flow and, and the, the way that the chakras and the way that the energy is moving inside. Um, another one of his pictures, back down to the relationship and the sex, is the way that it flows in between. Now, if you think about the chakras as a whole, the way that they're working as a system, and the meridian system works like this, the yin and yang system works like this. 
Now, if I turn my back to you, straight away, the energy's changed. Not only because it's rude, but because there's a feeling of the energy's changed, the X is backwards. And if you think about old texts, one of the biggest things that, um, when people were outlawed and things like that, you had your back turned on, they turn their back on you because of the amount that this symbolises. Now, from the opposite side, when you're having sex with somebody, when you're actually connecting, you're actually making a circuit and you're sharing that energy, whether it be good or bad. And if you think back to the onion philosophy at the beginning of the talk, all those layers, all those issues, everything that you're bringing with you, you're sharing with your partner. And you're bringing yourself down to this, to the, to the same vibration. So if you if you both high if you both high vibration, you bring yourself up. If you're lower your vibration, you bring yourself down because of this reaction you've got within the energy that's going on inside yourself. Now, um, still not sure about this energy stuff. The energy itself. I mean, I'm a healer. I do rise to healing. Um, Energy is a very peculiar thing because we've been taught if something doesn't come in your senses, so if you can't touch it, smell it, feel it, poke it, see it, doesn't exist, doesn't make sense. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist because everybody in here has had that intuition in their head go, oh, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. And where's that come from? You can't feel that, you can't taste that or see, what is it? Just a question, it's not an answer. Um, so, what I'm going to do, if you're all up for it, do you want a little experiment? Mm -hmm. You're all ready to quiet, it's good. <laughs> okay, so, not sure about this energy stuff? Let's see if we can feel it. You're already a bit quiet for this. You're already saying mine's loving you. You've got a kind shit, my group, huh? Okay. <laughs> Okay, everybody, put your drinks down. I need your hands. Okay, uncross your legs, uncross your arms. Because what you're doing is your energy is going that way. So your arms are crossed, your energy is crossed, you're going. Okay, okay. That's it, you got it. One step. Rub your hands together. Shake them. So, everybody close their eyes. Pull your hands out about a foot apart from each other. Don't say, just be aware of the atoms that are going around your fingers, the other temperature, where your fingertips. Can you feel, just be aware of its heat, whether it's cold, whether it's tingling, static. Bring those hands together a little bit, slowly, slowly. Can you feel it's getting denser? Can you feel it's changing? You've got a group, you, 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 the group will split now. You have a group of people like, yeah, I can feel it. You have a group going, nah, no, nothing. I don't know what you mean. Better if you take a deep breath. Ah, oh, there you go, we're getting tips already. Deep breath. <laughs> okay, everybody open your eyes. Now, shake hands. Come together. Turn to the person next to you, behind you, sideways to you, whoever, whatever, which way. Close your eyes if it helps, if it doesn't, don't worry. Don't question it, because if you question it, Everybody feeling something? No, mm. no, mm, Okay, everybody shake your hands, turn around somebody different. 
<laughs> find something you can even get up if you want to. Find somebody different, change around, turn around, move sideways. <laughs> when we're rubbing your hands together, we're not making heat or anything. What we're doing is we just come on forward. Here you go, you've got another one. Behind you. Here you go. There you go. Put your hands up together. Oh, we can't do One hand each. Can't do it on my own. We've done it before. I've always been stuck with a good example. You can tell? Yeah. I'll move one hand. Move your eyes closed. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
First you think about it. Before you build a house, you think about what the house is going to look like. You think about where it's going to be. You think about what you want from your house. So before that house ever, ever comes into fruition, you've thought about it. Arguing. How many people have sat brewing in there on the way to somebody thinking, I'm going to tell them this, and I'm going to tell them that, and I'm going to... You formed it before it's ever happened. So, what are you forming? So we've got a complete opposite. I love my job. I hate going to work. Really enjoy cooking. I don't know what to eat. I'm beautiful. I'm ugly fat and not good enough. Tomorrow is going to be a great day. The same shit, different day. And you know what, you've always got friends that you know, they'll just say this, oh, we'll be work again. Yeah, Monday. Mm. So, <coughs> when you ask the universe, what's it say? Yes. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so, let's go back. What are we asking him? I hate going to work. Yes, you do! You hate it! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I'm going to get wrecked this weekend. Yes, you are! You're not even going to remember it. <laughs> I'm never getting away this summer. It's going to be rubbish. Yeah, your summer's going to be shit. And the universe is just agreeing. The universe is going, yeah, you're right. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we think. <gasps> Pay attention to your intention. And if you, if you start focusing on, say like, think yourself thin, or think yourself rich. It doesn't say, think, you, think you're not fat. Mm -hmm. Think you're not in debt. Because even the words have got this negative connotation. So if you think now we charge with energy, and we are, without a shadow of a doubt, everything around us is charged with energy as well, including the words. So, pay attention to your intention. And it's not only you, it's everyone around you. Um, we are connected. I tried to think of the best way to, to show this. And I thought, Avatar. Everyone seen Avatar? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant film. It's, it's basically saying we're connected to the trees and the plants and the animals and everything's connected. And I completely agree. And I think Avatar, the Matrix and other things are somebody's, again, the old lady or the young lady, it's somebody explaining the way they feel comfortable. So I'll just nick their idea. Um, but not only are we all connected, um, you're actually finding somebody who's just the mirror version of yourself. Now I actually pinched this off somebody else's talk that I heard about uh, Mark Foster about um, two years ago now. And I thought, what a brilliant way to put it. And he actually, his explanation was, I didn't know where I was going this morning, so I stopped and asked for directions and found a version of myself that did know who directed me to where I needed to go. It's easy, it's easy. It's easy when the person who you meet is a projection of yourself because you've been nice. <laughs> but when you meet the person who's not been so nice, my dad, for example, I love him to bits. But he's always got a way of wanting to earn a tenner out of everybody. He always wants to rip everybody off. And everywhere he goes, he gets ripped off. He can't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is it. And this is what the universe is doing. It's going, yeah, you want to be like that? Here you go. There's another version of yourself. Do you like it? Yeah, you want to be like that? Another version of yourself. Do you like it? And that also comes with, um, with the life lesson as well. With what that person's going to tell you, because sometimes you meet somebody you'll go, for example, I did um, an Edge Media TV interview last, um, on Sunday, and I met this lovely lady, we would written a book, and uh, she was brilliant, and we got, off the, we got off the interview, I had a great interview, she had a great interview, we both watched it back, and we've both gone, ah, we look rough, <laughs> oh my God. Why have they let us go on telly looking like that? And we've both done it together. And we've both been on for an hour talking about the ego. <laughs> yeah? And I'm completely disconnected with on the ego. And we're both looking at it. And these, these guys go, you look fine. And we're looking at each other like that. It's not fine. It's not fine at all. 
And um, she said something which made me laugh because she said, I keep meeting people and they tell me what I need to do is read my own book, chapter six. I'm like, hmm, well, I'm doing a talk on Wednesday and all I keep getting is what you need to do is listen to your own talk. So I'm not necessarily saying that I can do all this stuff. I'm just saying I should know better. And the people that I meet along the way just remind me that you can do it, you should be doing a little bit better. And um, this memory thing has actually elaborated the past couple of months because my friend does a lot of um, self-help work and things like that. And um, the first thing you do is you look in the mirror and you say, I love myself, I accept myself, I, I'm beautiful. It's not like that, Susan. Yeah, that's easy, face to face, yeah, no problem. Looked in the mirror, my chin started going, my friend was like, I don't know about this, she was going, right, he says, well, what parts of yourself do you like? And just looking in the mirror and accepting yourself and, and being accepting of your own qualities, whether they be good or bad, avoids you from meeting people who have to tell you, because every so often the universe goes, all right, you're being stupid now. Have this to say, what are you doing? And you go, because you need it. So I think the main point to all this talking about chakras, talking about onions, talking about old ladies and young ladies is if we're aware of the energy and we're aware of the way we interact with each other on an energetic level, if you can do the looking in the mirror properly and mean it and be sincere with it, you'll avoid meeting people that are going to cause you conflict because the conflict isn't out there, it's inside. And I think the, the macronism of the micronism, the fact that everything that happens out there is happening inside, I think the, the world as it is shows how fucked up we all are inside, basically, because it's fucked up out there and we've created it. So if we've created that, We've got to have a word of ourselves because is that what we want to keep creating? Because if we don't do it mindfully, we're going to do it by accident because the universe just says yes. So if, you, if we're all sitting here going, I've got no job, I've got no money, it's all shit, everything's going wrong, the universe going, yeah, you're right, yeah. And then you look at, I mean, I've heard about the Occupy Bristol and taking the hats off to you guys. I mean, we're doing the same in Birmingham, but with, uh, the fact that you're all offering uh, drug and alcohol cancer on site, I think it's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's how caring and how nice is the fact that you're showing people compassion and you're coming from that area of upper chakras, you're dealing with selflessness, you're doing something for the good of, of everybody rather than to make myself feel better. So, without going too far into it, let's have a cup of tea and talk about it after that. I'm just telling my story and a lot of the speakers here are just doing the same, they're just finding what they found along the way and the story of what they've done. So, my story really, um, apart from all the jazz I've mentioned earlier, is um, the catalyst was really Truth Juice Birmingham for me. I mean, um, I did what Will's done here, which is, it rock. we've got all this information, let's get people to have a look at it and um, we'll tell you a bit about Truth Juice Birmingham. Okay, back in February 2010, I said, I went to um, a John Harris talk back in Truth Juice Wrexham. Um, I just stumbled across it. I found John Harris's talk on the internet and then I found the webpage that said he's doing a talk in Wrexham. I just thought, why not? Let's go and have a look at it. Without sounding really cheesy, it did change my life because I just thought, wow, wow, I'm not mad. There's other people out there that are looking at my stuff as well. And, um, Trust me, it's a secret. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, and back down to this manifesting stuff, is I said, first time I went there was, um, 
I want to open a group like this. But I don't want to be an organiser. I want to do my own talk. And still, I don't want to be an organiser. I want to do my own talk. And yet, I'm organising everything. So I'm organising with resistance. And actually, I asked for it, so I shouldn't now resist it. And knowing it and feeling it are different. And as I said, I can talk all of this stuff, but I am a little bit of a mechanic for the broken car in the garage. Do you know what I mean? I know all this stuff, but I still don't necessarily give it all the time. So I'm not doing the holy than thou. But this is what I wish for, was I wish for my own group. And surely enough, the universe says yes. Um, and what happens? It's piecing it all together. Now, the John Harris was just one piece of a, of a puzzle that's a lot bigger than I ever first realised. And I think um, truth juice as a whole, the reason why it works is because it's a variety of everything. Now, the Freeman wouldn't necessarily look at the fluoride, or the raw food people wouldn't necessarily look at the Freeman stuff, or the um, meditation doesn't seem relevant, but actually it really is. So once you start bringing together the, the mixture, the synergy of how it all works, these little pieces make a bigger picture and you start to see what's actually going on. Now, some of the pieces that I've found really important, now I've put these here because to me, the pieces have formed what it is I'm saying and not only what I'm saying, but what I think as a whole. Um, some of the speakers that I've got here, you're going to have down to see but to, in Bristol as well. Darren D.O.G., he was our first speaker and he does, he does a couple of talks. He spoke at um, Truth Juice Bristol. But the talk that really intrigued me was um, the words. He goes into words, um, spits at words like um, entrance, to be entranced, television, tower live vision, transmitted, a program. When you start looking into the word, you think, oh, hidden in plain sight. It couldn't be clearer, and yet we don't pay any attention to it. So the words has been a really interesting thing. And the other thing about the, the whole the onion and the old woman and the young woman is, I think words fail us a lot of the time. Is the words that we need to explain what it is we're trying to explain don't exist. Or what the word means to me doesn't necessarily mean the same to the person who I'm telling it to. Um, the other thing is the words are related to the shape of the letter. The words go in again, this jigsaw puzzle principle, so you've got the, the principle of the sentence, and you've got the words, and you've got the letter. Sacred geometry. Nick um, is coming to do a talk for you. Sacred geometry, ah, oh, sacred geometry. He's coming up on the 16th of November. Nick is my favourite speaker. Well, one of my favourite speakers, but when I first saw him, I was absolutely fascinated. And um, at the time, it was about two years ago, and there were about eight people in the room, and it was one of the best talks I've heard. And um, now he's filling rooms, he's doing, he's, I mean, he had um, 80 at Birmingham, and my room was quiet. My group was quiet. Now, if you can keep my room quiet, you've, you've done something right. But the sacred geometry is really interesting because, back down to this jigsaw puzzle principle, of it links with the words, it links with the anatomy, it links with biology, microscience, the way the universe is formed, the way our atoms interact. It's all to do with the shapes. Now, um, Nick said something with a triangle. This might sound crazy, yeah? Nick said something with a triangle, and the principle is, you can add to that triangle and keep it going forever. Or you can go internally forever as well. The shape can go inwards <coughs> forever, outwards forever. You can make it as simple or as complicated as you want. And I think that analogy works on every level is you can go into something really deep. Say aromatherapy, I'm an aromatherapist. Now, an overview of what it does is amazing. You could go into an oil. You could just study lavender oil for the rest of your life if you wanted to, because there's that much going on. Do you want an overview or do you want a piece? So it's, again, just be mindful of what's going on. Um, the other thing is I'm really thankful for everybody who has met. And that includes shopkeepers and the, the random conversations and the, 
the silly conversations and the one sentences that you get from somebody you just think, no way, that's just what I needed to hear. So, um, it's just bringing relevance to it all. I think a um, perfect analogy of it is, we're all climbing this mountain, and we're all on the mission to the top of the mountain, and we're all taking our own path. Now we can argue over who's taking the right path, who's taking the wrong path, should you be on my path, is my path better than yours? Or, we can just take our own route. Now the way that I see it is, we're climbing this mountain. If you see somebody who needs a hand, say, here you go mate, this is a quick shortcut. So listen, they listen. If they don't listen, they don't listen. Because sooner or later you're going to meet them up again, because they're all climbing the same mountain anyway. So. I think, um, again, this is an analogy that, fa- that I feel fits. But once you meet other people, they'll give you an analogy that's pretty much the same. Somebody said, um, we're all looking at a crystal ball, but we're all looking from a different angle. So the facets and the beauty we see are different because we're all looking at it from a different angle. But yeah, profound. But it's just the same as what the mountain It's just the same. It's just the way that people feel comfortable saying it. Now, I think once you look at alternative topics, you get five stages of um, five stages of acceptance, and then the same stage as grief, which is disbelief. Nah, I wouldn't put fluoride in our water. Would they do that? No, the government aren't trying to rob us. No, the pharmaceutical companies are there to help. Disbelief. Then when you realise it's all lies, you get really angry about it. You think, how can they be telling us that the pharmaceutical companies are helping us when they're actually poisoning us? Then you realise you can't do anything about it so you can get depressed. Now, a lot of people flicker in between depression and, and anger for a long time. Then you get to acceptance, right, this is what's happening. What can we do about it? And this is where you've got to take your hat off to people like Will and Toby and people who are occupying Bristol and the other people that are doing things on the fact because they're at the action stage. So hopefully what we're trying to do is be a catalyst for all these other people that are at the bottom of the mountain. Come here, go. No, do believe it. Yeah, we were angry as well. Yeah, it's shit. But come see what we can do. So. Now, my state of action was truth juice because I spoke to my mates that much. They, my mates know I'm mad. They love me for it. But... I could only tell him so much. I get annoyed. I think, why am I telling? And I go, yeah, Vic, whatever. I've been smoking too much. And I thought, right, I'm going to get a room full of experts, and you can listen to the expert, and then you can see what he says about it. And that was the original thought concept with it. But what happened from then? I mean, when I did this talk, I um, when I first read this talk, I looked back at my diary from when I first went to Truth Juice in Wales. And it was just like a little girl. It's like, oh, I love this place. It's really good. I met, I met this genius, crazy genius guy. And um, I think the, the first thing that took me was the fact that the um, people, I just love this group of people. And I had this thing where I was going out on the weekend, spending £100 easily, coming back, laggy, but not really content. I've been at a brilliant party. I've been at the best place in the town, but, just, but I never felt content. And yet I go to... Wales, listen to microbiology for two hours and come back feeling like I've done something good. And um, I just, I changed. I changed to get back down to the beginning of the talk because it's all changed. It's my whole mindset changed. And I really, I, I just fell in love with the place. So, what I tried to do when I did this talk was try and work out what it is that I fell in love with and how it works. Now, <coughs> the first first thing that was apparent was the information. It was like, right, we're sharing information. But what happened was, I realised that the groups that I was going to, I didn't even care about the information. I wouldn't even look at what the speaker was. I'd just go, I just want to go. Because it was the community, it was the coffee break, it was everyone having a fag outside and talking shit, basically. And that became more appealing than the information, I'm not more appealing, but equally as appealing because I just wanted to speak to the people. I'd like a new group of mates that didn't think I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, they think I'm mad. <laughs> but what happened was what I found was the people that I was speaking to 
had such a wealth of information about everything. It was actually, I was getting just as much information off the group as I was off the speaker. So, what happened in Trudy's Birmingham, once we, once we set it up, was um, we actually sourced our own speakers from the group. We had an open mic night, and it was like, well, what's relevant to you? So the people were coming up, and, and it was just became a platform. It was no more than that. It was just a stage for people to then disseminate their ideas and their research. So I think something that we're really lacking is um, our peers. We don't have a chance to speak to people about what we found, what we're doing. I mean, if you talk, talk to you about your parents at the time, they used to, they used to go to the pub. Used to go to the, there used to be social groups, the WR, the gentleman club, this club, that bowling. Nobody does anything anymore. Everybody just sits in on Facebook watching X Factor or, and nobody interacts. And I think it's the interaction that we, that, that is our healing. I think it's the interaction that, that just talking to somebody doesn't even matter what you're talking about. And you kind of see it with them. Um, when you see kind of like old ladies walking around the, the sh it's talking to shop attendants, carrying on a conversation that they're just, just happy to talk to somebody. It doesn't matter what it's about, the weather. Just that interaction is vital and I think it's what we've been taken away from. Now, <coughs> the information, as I said, became, became, um, became less important than this community. And I think that's what we ended up focusing on was a community. And truth to you here is in its infancy, but once we really start to flourish, you guys have got people that are of the same mindset around you. You've got assets around you because everybody here has got a similar sort of idea about things and has also got a knowledge base on a particular subject. So once you start interacting with each other, you'll find that this community will just grow from nowhere. I mean, like the Occupied Square, this... We, we need to be supporting them, and we should be supporting them from something like this, where we're communicating with each other, and then we support, say, like, grow projects, permaculture projects. There's a whole host of things that are happening in the city. People don't even know are happening because we've lost the sense of community. And what happens from this community is everything else flows out of it. So once you've got a platform for people to talk to each other, that's when the ideas spring up. So you have an idea, then you find somebody who supports you with your idea, because they can see value in it. What's that bring you bring to new mate? There's just friendships. Just Birmingham, it's amazing. You get into the group and they'll go, oh, I was at his house last week and we had a party. It's just like we've just become like an odd joke. I have to call it the big youth club. Because it is, it's just like a big youth club 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> and I think really, that's what truth juice is, is it's, the information is vital, don't get me wrong. But actually, you are truth juice. You guys choose what it is because you're it. So, I tried to work out what is the objectives. What are truth juice's objectives? Because as it's grown, it's like, well, what do we do with it? Because people need it, people want the information, people enjoy the social side of it. We've avoided going down the business side because it's becoming something we're not. But what are the objectives? What's the point? What are we even doing it for? Well, the first thing is truth. Where can you start with the word truth? I've had so many conversations about what's true, what isn't true, who's to say it's true, is it true to you, is it true to me? And this is just a tangent, but everything that becomes, in my opinion, this is what my truth juice is and this is what I feel it is. But as I said, you guys will create what you want it to be as well. Now, these brainstorming, it's just like, oh, what is it? It's respect, support, love, transparency. We want to be able to see what everyone's doing. Now, the table at the front, um, it's looking a bit bare at the moment, but it's looking bare because we need you guys to... to to say what you want on it. If you've got events, if you've got things that you think that other people should be relevant of, if you think there's something that other people should know, bring your flyer, put it on the table. If you've got DVDs that you think that are interesting, bring the DVD, we'll burn it, we'll distribute it. 
Because actually, we're here to help you to then make truth choose become what you want it to be. Because we're not here to form it. I'm not here to form it. I'm not. Here, I'm just telling you what I see truth juice as, and this is my truth juice. And actually, it's not my truth juice anymore because I passed it on to um, the group. So this is where I was coming from. The transparency, I think, is really important, and the. Um, fact that everybody puts their individualness to it. I mean, Will's, Will and Toby have done a great job here. Dave in Liverpool is completely different. Freeman vibe, again, brilliant job. Birmingham, different vibe, because everyone's got its own touch. And everyone's got its own energy that's been put into it. Trust. Now, the trust has been developed from nowhere because it's just become this community. Community. The next stages, I mean, what I've just said there, this is your thing. So this is responsibility. Are you guys able to respond? Because what we're trying to do is empower you. So it's not for us to make it, it's you to choose what it is. So all it is is an empowerment tool. So what are you going to use it for? Now, as I said, I'm a healer. And believe it or not, this was the last thing that went on the list, was healing. Now, as I said, everyone would benefit from a massage and aromatherapy or reflexology. Or we would. However, just by being in the room, just by interacting, just by talking to each other, there's an aspect of healing there because the mirror will make sure that whatever you need to know will be presented to you whether you like it or not. So it's just the interaction is what causes the healing. And I think once we start looking, looking at the fact that we need healing, the fact that this, this situation that we're in at the moment has been caused by us living in the bottom three chakras. We're all selfish, we're all want something for ourselves, we want to rip somebody off, we're greedy, sexual. We're not saying that sex is bad, but if it's coming from a selfish place, it's, it's a different energy. And if we can move into this selfless, where you go and you're talking to somebody because it's helping them, making somebody a cup of tea, you're popping around and helping them fix their tyre. We had um, all the fruit come off the trees and we had people bringing in the apples because they're saying, well, they're only going to waste. And there's somebody there who really appreciates that. Somebody made jam out of all the spare pears and things like that. So it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be healing as you, as you think in a conventional term. Just, just being there for somebody is enough. So, part of the truth juice. This is how I try, I'm trying to mix it up now. So, Taking the information, the network, so this is your coffee break, and then this is the um, speakers that have been produced by the group. So the group has basically found its own speakers, found its own knowledge. We've got open mic night in December. If anybody's got anything that they want to say or they feel is important or something they've researched, please come and do a talk. And then from there, if you're confident enough and if um, if you'd like to, then you can do a full two hour talk on your chosen subject. So what this is doing is, it's great, see how I mix the up here with the sacred geometry. <laughs> um, the thing about sacred geometry is it can go on forever. So, we've got the information, we've got the networking, and we've got the platform. It's all spinning. If you think this is something, wait till you see Colin's Vortex Math next week. <laughs> 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 well, um, the principle is, this then can be mirrored, as it has been here. So, the networking and the information, the platform. So, the platform is Truth Juice. We've got the platform in Birmingham. The information's been shared in Bristol. We've got a new group opening in Nottingham. We've got one in Plymouth. Now, the principle is, if we can source, not in principle, this is happening, is once we source the speakers from the groups, then we can swap the information from city to city. Now, as I said, sacred geometry just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. You can put these circles on any direction and it makes its own pattern, it fractalizes. So, what are we doing? This is, um, we'll hear all about this next week, is the infinite, infinity is. Creating something that's not going to die, it's got sustainability to it. 
So, we set something up. It's been executed. Will's set up Troy's Juice. He's done a brilliant job. He's executed it. He's maintaining it while coming back every week and keeping everything going. Facebook. We love it. But this part here, this is what I'm going to ask you guys to do. And um, it's vital in making it work. Feedback. Really easy. Just tell us what you want. It's a comment book. Is your comment book? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, comment book. Tell us what you want. Tell us what speakers you want to hear about. If you've got somebody you think is particularly good, let them know. Let us know that they're there. Because as I said, this is yours. So unless you give us feedback, it's just going to be, oh, I don't like that no more. Because you haven't integrated it in the way that you feel fits. Now, I'm not going to say whether it fits is right or wrong, because it's not mine, it's yours. If you think it's important, let us know. We've had everything from the vegan association to abductees to, to everything, because they feel the information is relevant. So if they feel the information is relevant, that information is relevant. So, once this, once this model is working correctly, and it has worked in Birmingham, and it is working here, it's worked around the country, if then we can do it again. And we can mirror this, and we can do it again, and we can do it again, and we can do it again. For an exit strategy. Now, I found this really hard to walk away from my group, because I loved it, but I just wanted to go, I want to go travelling, still want to go travelling, the universe don't want me to go, but I still want to get away. But the exit strategy is vital because actually, if it's yours, there can't be somebody there to run it because it's got to be self-sustainable. And once you get the model of the feedback and everything working right, in principle, it should flow without any leader because the group, you know what, Bristol occupation, perfect, perfect example of how it's self-policing, it's looking after itself. I've got here, and you've got that they've got drug and alcohol workers on, on site. You can't even get that. You can't even get that anyway. Let alone on on the site next to the recycling bins. So this is where we kind of say, well, what do we need? What do you want? So two trees around the country. Um, we've got um, North Wales, Birmingham, West Wales, Hull, Liverpool, Leicester, dotting around the UK nicely, and of course. Da -da! Bristol. <laughs> now, once this, this, they're a bit sparse at the moment, but it's filling up. These gaps are filling up. What we want in the end, we want a full web. So we can have places to disseminate this information. We can have a team of experts. We have got a, um, somebody to call on on whatever subject we need. Now, I say truth juice is anything that affects your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, or financial health. If I've missed anything, let me know. Um, but there's always an alternative. There's always an alternative, whether it be Freeman route, whether it be health, whatever it is. And unless you make people aware that there's an alternative, they're never ever gonna know. So this is, this is what I see the vision as. Okay, let's grow that vision. Because we've actually got um, Truth Juice in Australia. I've just started Brisbane, Truth Juice Brisbane. Uh, we've, got, <laughs> we've got one in um, Wales, he's a friend of ours who does a um, retreat of sustainability. He does a sustainable energy, so he does like um, alternative living and self um, lots of eco community, um, wind turbine energy centres and things like that. So slowly we're spreading around and getting a lot of interest internationally as well. I'm big. So let's let's fill it up. Let's fill in the gaps. Let's offer alternatives. Let's do something different. I mean, as a therapist, if you mention chemotherapy. A doctor would not have chemotherapy. If he had cancer, a doctor wouldn't have chemotherapy. That in itself 
is enough to question why they're suggesting that people who've got cancer to have chemotherapy. What they're doing is they're profiting. It's all about profit. There's no profit in cure. And it's like, well, actually, if everybody was doing something that they really loved to do and something that they were passionate about and something that they felt really, they really wanted to do it, back down to this mind, body and spirit thing, if people are going so far against the grain, with every, in every act, they're doing a job they hate, they're doing something every day they hate, everything they're doing is against the grain. So no wonder we've been affected physically, no wonder we're real. We're poisoning ourselves, not only with, you guys are lucky because you're a lot less fluoridated than Birmingham, but Birmingham's really fluoridated, the food, the e-numbers, Disgusting. We've been dumbed down and we've been oppressed so much. And you think, well, wait a minute. If we are energetic beings and we are so powerful, and they're suppressing us, suppressing us, suppressing us, suppressing us, and yet we're still doing things like this, imagine how powerful we'd be if we really did use the full amount of energy we've got, and we weren't wasting it everywhere we're going, just just wasting it and putting our intent into something good. New World Order, Ooh. <laughs> We are the New World Order. <laughs> <laughs> True World Order! Oh, I like it. <laughs> Stealing Colin, Colin's punchline, he's not going to like this. <laughs> 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 Taking the seat next week, yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, we can change it. We can change anything. So, are we going to go along with this whole kind of, we're going to be oppressed, we're going to be... I think um, a lot of the time we like to talk about the problem. We like talking about problems. Let's not talk about the problem anymore. Let's talk about the solution. Because once you're talking about the problem, you're just bringing people into this skept fear. So I'll hold you back down into the what's going to happen to me. Uh, you back down into these selfish, lower chakras, what's going to happen, worry, mind. And actually, we just need to just, just be, because we are the solution. We are the solution. We are, and until we can see, and until we can look in the mirror and log what we see, we're just going to keep creating the same shit, because what we see when we look in the mirror is shit. Because that's what we've created. It must be. That must be what's happening. Because look what our world has become. So, we are the solution. So, all right. This is easy to say. Everybody, think positive. Everybody, be positive. My friend, he goes, it's easy to say this be positive thing. And I wish I could just be, I wish I could just think, but actually, no. Because we're so ingrained in feeling and thinking what we think. It's back down to this onion. How deep is this feeling of we're not worth it, we're not good enough, why bother? So, thinking is one thing, but what you really need to do is feel it. So, instead of thinking about this, thinking about this, living in your mind, you need to go back to your heart and you need to start feeling things. Now, when you think about words and sentences and things, you start going into this left brain, picking things apart. But actually, if you see a picture, if you have a smell, if you have a, it, it instigates a feeling. Now, we had um, a speaker in Birmingham talk about um, cognitive behaviour. And uh, he was saying, he said, when something happens, we remember it. So, say if you had a argue with your boyfriend, you got sacked, or you achieved an award when you were a kid, or whatever it was. If you think about it, and you go into your mind, your body doesn't know whether you're imagining it, or whether it's really happening. So your parasympathetic nervous system just goes straight back into that feeling. So however you felt at the time, you feel it again. And uh, Roger put it really well, he was like, how many times do you think, oh, I've got nothing to do? Oh, let's just go and uh, we've got that feeling that made me feel shit six years ago and just feel shit again. Do you know what I mean? And we do it all the time. And it's, why do you do it? So, 
becoming conscious. Becoming conscious of how you feel, what you want to feel. So if you're feeling in a way that you don't want to feel, snap out of it. As I said, I'm doing this talk because I need to listen to my own advice. <laughs> <laughs> but it is as simple as that. It's snap yourself out of it. We had uh, another speaker, Magnus. I think he's down and put this coming down. Is that his name, Magnus? Yeah, Back 30, isn't it? Yeah. Magnus did a brilliant talk for us. And he said, um, he says, people say, you'll look back at this and laugh. He's gone, well, wait till then. Laugh at it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, okay. What do you want to feel? Now, once you start, I think, I think pictures are better than this, better for this. And the secret principle of like you bring forward what you want. Now, if you make, um, in fact, the word dream board, I think I'm going to revise this because it's not a dream board because the, dream, the word itself says that it's, it's unattainable. So it's actually like, my friend calls her the wish board and she we was going, no, we've got to call it something different. It's, um, it's a reality thing. You've got to feel it. You've got to feel like it's already there. And back down to what the universe says, yes. If you go, I want to be rich, it goes, yes, you want to be rich. Yes, you want to be rich. Well, you don't. You say, I am. I am rich. I am beautiful. I already am it. I don't need to. Because otherwise, you're always going to be wanting to feel like that. I wish I was. So, bring yourself into the feeling and then everything else will align with it. So, a couple of things that I wanted. Now, this wasn't for me. This was for Truth Juice. And um, some of the things that I said, my main objective was health centres. I didn't even, Truth Juice just fell on my lap, fell on me. I don't know how it happened. What I did, I stood in the car park and said, I want to do a group like this. And he's going, yes. But what I actually want is wellness centres and places where people can go to stay well. Rather than people going when they're really ill and to a stage of the, they're on the deathbed in bits. Why wait to that level? Why not go there when you're feeling a little bit worse for wear? Because this society we're in spends a lot of time dealing with the symptom and doesn't spend enough time dealing with the cause actually just masking it, masking it, masking it. So my idea was well on the centre. UK law firm, um, there's a lot of freemen, there's a lot of freemen here, there's a lot of freemen that have been associated with recently. And um, I think the, the information's all there, we just need to share it better. Support and encouragement, I think um, doesn't matter what we're covering, we need to support, it, support each other. Why not? If you're gonna wish, you might as well do it big. We're gonna go worldwide and have friends everywhere and make a real difference. And you know what, we are. And I look at my group and um, I see the people that come, and it's nearly been a year, it's its birthday in November. And um, I remember what the people were like when they first arrived. And uh, for example, we've got one guy who um, Spent the first two weeks at the door going, there's a police one in here, there must be, there must be. <laughs> and then he spent the next week going, oh, I don't know about this. And then he was like, I don't know about you. You <laughs> might be. And then he, now, he's, um, he ended up bumping into one of the guys who talked about meditating and he got into the meditating. He's had Kundalini experience, built a, med built a pyramid in his garden, yeah? And started, started going out just preaching the, the Zen philosopher. And I look and I just laugh and I just feel that's, that warms my heart because the catalyst was truth juice. It would have never looked at this stuff without bumping into, bumping into us. So, this is the question I'm gonna ask you tonight. What do you want, what do you guys dream? What do you guys want? Now, a couple of things that, um, Soup kitchen, youth project, group gardens, organic planting, cooking, eating. You can't plant it without cooking it. <laughs> 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 well, that'd be raw food. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah we've got to talk on that. <laughs> no. um, meditation meetups, people taking them, um, all sorts. Again, it's what you guys want. So, I ask you again, what do you want? 
What do you guys want? I'm just going to leave that one with you. See where you go. But what I will say is... You've changed! And... Uh, the only thing constant is change. So just be mindful of it and... Um, hopefully... Truth Juice in itself will be forwarded by what you guys want. So... It's yours. Thank <laughs> you. 